Good evening. It's Thursday, April 14th, 2022, and this is at 7.02 p.m. And we are um, meeting for the Simsbury Water Pollution Control Authority. Here tonight, I am Jay Sheehan, the vice chair, acting as chair. We have Michael Park, Jacques Brignac, and Lucien Draguski. Draguski. And also from the town, represent, that's the WPCA. We also have from the town, Allison Sturgeon and Tony Piazza. Um, first things first is a safety brief. And what is a good safety brief? Tony, you want to, do you have one for us? Have you done one with the, the team lately? Uh, actually, uh, yeah, we, um, it's late in the season already, but ticks are out and abound. So, uh, my, my guys actually just walked into the woods for three minutes today and it came out with six ticks on them. So be very aware that they're out there right now. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the second item is sewer use fees for fiscal year 2022-2023. We talked about this last meeting, and this is um, our continuation. Okay, Tony, do you want to fill us in on? Yeah, I am going to share my screen here. Um, so we're not looking to change a lot of the rates. Um, FCC's plan is staying the same. Um, sewer use fees are staying the same. We're actually still in a good position with our um, reserve fund. Um, the only things that we're looking at potentially changing are, which is the construction permit fee. It's been $100 since 2004. Um, I'm actually recommending we bump that up to $150 based on the fact that it takes not inspection purposes, but just processing purposes, it takes about two to two and a half hours between Allison and our inspector for processing the paperwork, creating the drawings, all of that stuff. And then add on top of that, the um, inspection time that the inspector is out there doing the work. So I think increasing the construction permit fee to $150 would be prudent. And then also increasing the labor for our vehicles or for when we go out and do uh, work for anybody, raising that up to $50 as well for those two. Um, those, those two are the easy ones. <laughs> You're muted, Jay. Thanks, Tony. Um, let's stop there for one second uh, if those are the easy ones. So... Um... You said raise up the construction permits to 150. How many do we get a year? How many would you estimate? You know, rough numbers. Do we get two or 20? Uh, probably close to 70, maybe. I don't know. Right, Al about 70, Allison? I'd say um, because of the Talcott Mountain development, you know, the, the developments, um, they're coming in like 20 permits at a time. Okay, that's a lot. It's more than I would have guessed, that obviously. Uh, yeah, any other questions about those two? Since those, again, I'd like to put those two easy ones on the table and then we can talk about the more difficult ones. Okay, hearing none, go ahead, Tony, move on. Okay, the, the two that we, um, the new ones, those two actually don't require any um, public hearing or anything because it only affects specific people and doesn't affect usage of the system. Uh, the next two, um, which are uh, a fog registration, um, we'll start with that one. Basically, the fog registration would be for any class three or class four restaurant in the town of Simsbury. Um, this would be um, where you are actually required to go out and check their maintenance logs um, for cleaning purpose of their automatic grease recovery units or their outside grease traps that they have. Um, they're supposed to do monthly um quarterly, semi-annual, there's all sorts, there's a whole list of maintenance items they need to do on these systems and we're, spo we're supposed to go out and check those. Um, so to cover our costs with that, we're actually recommending doing a $50 biannual fee for that. Um, and we're actually gonna, with this process, we're actually gonna make them send us the, the logs and everything. And if they don't send them to us, then we can go out and enforce it um, with our enforcement policy of Actually, we could find them $90 a day if that doesn't work. Um, I'm working, I have a policy in draft form for that. 
um, that I'll be able to share with you next time, but it's just for setting the fee purposes. Uh, again, this is for a uh, processing fee. It would be a biannual fee of $50 to cover our costs for um, inspections and maintaining all the paperwork. Question there. Biannual to me means every two years. Correct. Semi-annuals twice a year. So you're every talking about two years. every two years. Every okay. two years. Okay. Or changing. Or and they don't have market. a fee now. At there all. is no fee now. And it doesn't there are, seem a lot. There are several communities that actually do have this $50 fee already. Some are doing it annually. Some are doing it biannually. Any questions for Tony, to, <laughs> for Tony on the fog registration? So this is, they're already doing the pumping. There's already a state statute in place that requires them to do certain things and register. Now we're just adding dollars to it to cover some of the administrative costs of tracking it. And what I do like what you're saying about this is if we do a fee, then they're self-reporting. It, it kind of helps with the communication of them self-reporting and, and feeling, you know, ownership of this program. Okay, so hearing no questions, why don't you go on to the industrial permit? Okay, the, in, the industrial permit is a, is a bigger thing, but not as, not so much. Um, back in 2000, 2000, the state turned over the miscellaneous industrial users permit to the towns for enforcement. Um, there was a lot of questions when that came about whether or not we would be able to charge anything for that. Um, to give you guys a little background, the state, and I believe it was for um, a class one or group one discharges, which is anything less than 25,000 gallons per day was um, $6,250 fee that had to be paid to the state um, for anything else like non-process um, discharges. That was a $3,125 fee that the state got. Um, with the new, so right now, no one's getting any of that money because of that. Um, the state split it out to significant industrial users and the state still takes care of that, which is anything over 25,000 gallons. And they're getting a thousand dollars per user. The state is getting a thousand dollars for anything over, over 25,000 gallons. Um, I, we looked around, I had Mike do some information to gather, um, what, who has policies around us. Um, Farmington hasn't implemented theirs yet and they're planning on charging, um, Suffield charges $500. Uh, hold on. I'll give you an exact amount for a permit fee, a $500 permit fee and an annual fee of a hundred dollars. So the total sum would be $1,000 for, for the length of the permit. Um, Torrington does $500 for anything up to 5,000 gallons and $1,000 up to 25,000 gallons. Um, and Glastonbury has one, but they haven't implemented any fees yet, but they do plan to. Um, South Windsor, has, has theirs as well. And hold on. they have, they have, they have it listed as whatever their fee schedule is, but they don't have what their fee schedule. They didn't post what their fee schedule was, but they have, they do charge stuff similar to us. Um, what I'm actually recommending is a hundred dollar registration fee for all industrial users um, for anybody for flows between 1,000 and 5,000 gallons per day would be a $500 permit fee plus the $100 registration fee. Um, and for anything over 5,000 gallons a day would be a thousand dollar permit fee plus a hundred dollar registration fee. Um, just so you guys understand who this is going to affect. Um, and I'm still narrowing this down. There's approximately 60 industrial users in the town of Simsbury. So it's not like it's a huge amount of industrial users. Um, people that are over 5,000 gallons, there's six. 
And I think those are all in Avon. You just brought up an interesting point. So if the user is in a different town, either Granby or Avon, where we're connected, we, you know, we collect. The way we have the intermunicipal agreement with them is that they're just users and they pay the total flows to our plant. In this case, um, would we be having to collect that ourselves or would we be just charging the town for that permit fee? I would recommend charging. We, we do not have the right to go in and charge an Avon customer anything, but we have the right to charge Avon for that customer. Got it. Important nuance there. Which is similar to what we do with the users that flow into Avon from us. We, we actually pay Avon for the users, for our users that flow into Avon. Well, we, they, we credit them but we don't pay them, but we credit them cash. <clears throat> so it would be something so, similar to that. So is Tony's recommendation clear to everyone? It's a hundred dollar registration fee for the smallest users. That would just be it for larger users is a $500 on top of that. And then for the largest of our, our users in the system, there's a thousand on top of that. And then we're charging the communities, Granby and Avon, the same way we charge our sewer to them and they would have to pay and then collect it themselves. And, and, and again, I'm still, basically the, the big things that this falls under, just so you guys are aware, um, <clears throat> things that fall underneath neat this are um, commercial laundries, um, food processing, um, any breweries or distilleries, printing, um, print or photography processing, any uh, water treatment systems, any parts cleaning, um, anything that we decide we want to charge for, which is a nice caveat in there. Um, building maintenance wastewater, fire protection system wastewater, um, non contact cooling water, swimming pool wastewater vehicle maintenance, wastewater. Th those are the big ones that we're looking, um, that are on the list of things we can, we can have to have registered. Um, there's other things that are in there that are in industrial stuff, um, but they fall underneath um, different processes um, like dentist office, medical office buildings, they fall underneath different permits. I'll, I'll just remind everyone too that it, it, the reason um, we don't have the exact count and Tony's still working on it is because the state had terrible records. So when they turned the program over to the communities, they did not really provide, hey, here's the list of permits and users. There was very incomplete lists. So we're gonna just have to continue to build that over time. It's easy for new industry, but it's harder for older industry. So we'll miss some and then we'll get them back. And then, you know, there'll be some, you know, it just, it's just, we got to work on that over time. And again, I am working on, I have a policy and draft form for this as well um, that lays this all out that I'll hopefully have pretty ready to ready and approved by the town lawyer for the next meeting. So we'll be able to get that out, but we want, we have to set a meeting to get these rates set because these affect users of the system. So we have to have a public hearing for the, the for these two fees. And Tony, just clarification there. Does, does this item in the fog item, because the policies aren't in place yet, do they have, are they contingent upon those policies or can we go with the fees without the policies? We can go with any fee we want without the policy. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. So to the authority, um, any questions, thoughts, concerns, and would we entertain a motion potentially? So, so the motion is to upgrade those fees, correct? It would be to update the fees and probably to set a hearing. And Allison, do they need to be two different motions? I believe all you need is a motion to um, set the public hearing for the May meeting. And I think that would be sufficient. 
Okay. So the fees are a recommendation and then the, we, we have the hearing. Okay. Yeah. Because a, yeah, after the public hearing is when you would vote on the fees. Okay. And those, those other two items we don't have to vote on. Yeah. The, 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 um, inspection, um, it's our uh, construction permit fee and the labor. We don't, th those are not, those do not affect sewer users. Those, oh, okay. those are, yeah, it's, it's okay. just, if it's, if it affects the use of this use of the system. Okay. So I, I move that we set up a public hearing for the fog registration and industrial permit registration. Thank you. Any seconds? Second. Second, great. Mute. Unmute yourself, Jay, and do it again. Yes, yeah, so all those in favor say aye. Raise your hand, please. Aye. 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 And it looks like everyone's in favor. No, any opposition? Aye. Nay. So, okay, so we move. <clears throat> okay. So that's that item. Thank you all. Uh, the next item is uh, we had some correspondence from the public about sewer. There's interest in sewer on Sand Hill Road. And they're asking, uh, they're saying that there's some, um, some interest from the neighbors. So Tony's showing a picture of that. So Abigail's is kind of at the foot of Sand Hill. So if you pan over to the right a little, you'll see Abigail's is right there. So Stratton Brook, you know, Route 10, and then Sand Hill comes. That's that kind of funny intersection between Canal Street and Sand Hill Road. So 44 Sand Hill Road is right here, right in the center of the screen. There are sewers in on Knoll Lane. Hmm. There's sewers up on Tallwood. Hmm. Um, and there's sewers down on Deer Park, I believe, right I can't remember if it's Croft Lane has sewers or not, but I believe it does. So basically this section in here does not have sewers on Sand Hill Road. So the action would be to set a public hearing if we... Um, actually, no, we don't, we're, we don't do that first. We actually will do an, an informational meeting. Um, if you guys want to move ahead with this, if you think it's beneficial, um, I want to say, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, potentially 13 or 14 homes to pick so, up. In so here. Tony, if, if there are public sewers on trainer and no, yes. Lane, where do no, they yeah, drain? No. What's that? I'm sorry. How do they drain? They do actually they come out to Deer Park. Oh, okay. And the, the tall wood comes out the back onto in this into um sorry onto Stillbrook. Out, out to Stratton Brook Road and down. Do, do we have any idea how many of the neighbors are interested? Uh there were, she had two two neighbors that said were interested. So, like I said, we'll we'll do what we've been doing, which has worked out well, is we, we'll have an informational meeting with them, tell them the process, and then if everyone seems like they're willing to hear more, we'll send out in, at that point, that's when we send out the interest cards to see who is actually interested. Okay. Got but it. instead of just jumping into it and working on estimates and, and things of that nature, we, we uh, try to avoid all the headaches <laughs> in Valentine's day uh, meetings. All right, so it sounds like uh, we're generally in favor of you continuing the normal process. We don't have to make a motion necessarily. Um, you do the interest cards and then they come to an informational meeting. Jay, you're, you're muted again. Yep, sorry, I'm, just, I'm trying to hit my space bar every time. So I don't uh, interfere. Um, so we'll we're able to move on um, from that. You, you, the, the town will do their normal thing, and we'll have a.
Okay. Uh, you're off again. Sorry, I, I'm trying to use my space bar, so I'm not getting background noise, but it's not working. So I'm going to stop doing that. Um, so the next item is status report on sewer extensions. Tony, you lead us through that, please. Yeah, uh, everything is pretty much uh, status quo. Um, the only one, uh, Pine Hill uh, Homeowners Association, um, they are having the, a vote on May 6th to see if they want to proceed with that um, sewer extension in there or sewer replacement in that facility. Um, Woodland Street, um, we're still waiting on a state permit to complete the work inside Dino Nobel property for crossing the abandoned railroad track. Um, hope I was hoping to have that this week. Um, they are actually going to be back in town tomorrow uh, to start doing some landscaping restoration um, so we can get the landscaping working on those areas. But that's it for the two, for the major uh, processes that are going on for um, extensions. Okay, any questions on sewer extension <clears throat> projects? Hearing none, we'll move on to the treatment facility report. So um, still doing fine with our um, permit. We had some uh, issues with our disinfection system when we put it back on. Luckily, we put it back online a week early, like we always do. Found uh, numerous small items that decided to give us headaches. So it was a little scramble for a, a bit, trying to get um, parts from Canada um, down to us, but it's up and fully operational um, without any issues. Um, AECOM has finished the facilities connect or facilities water pollution control facilities plan and the water pollution control plan. They have finished them both. Um, we did some corrections uh, um, next week. Um, Tom and I are going to go over the, uh, the final document. And with that, hopefully at our next meeting, I will have that presented for you guys um, in the water pollution control plan has to be approved by the board and signed by the, by the chairman to, and submitted to the state. Um, so that we'll have that for next month. Sewer lining, um, granite inliner is gonna be coming in for their final year of their three-year contract. We got have about 8,000 more linear feet of sewers in terra fill to take care of. Um, we'll also be doing a New for sewers, um, lining of the force main, I'll get into that in a minute. And we're also gonna be doing some lines on Hot Meadow Street. <clears throat> Excuse me, Jay, you probably know about, you probably heard about them as a Primus liner. Yes. Um, yeah. they, they were unable to confidently line with in situ, you know, with the, the normal lining, the force main. Um, so they, the Granite Inliner actually just bought Primus liner. So in Primus liner, just so you guys know, they've been, um, lining water force mains for about two decades now, give or take. Um, and they jumped at the opportunity to do this for us. And it actually will reduce the installation time from a week to eight hours. Um, it's a little bit trickier as, as far as on a discharge end because the line is designed to be pressurized all the time. So we're gonna have to do put a check valve in at the end of the line. Um, before it hits the force main, just to keep the line pressurized all the time. But other than that, it'll be a uh, an easy project, hopefully, and uh, it'll last for another twenty years. Be well, well, uh, you get a new another superintendent in here to worry about it. <laughs> um, we actually finished the uh, interviews for the two operators. We actually have two can uh, two people um, that accepted the position, so we'll be fully staffed here coming in a couple weeks. Um, one guy is coming from an industrial, um, sewer user and the other gentleman was a mechanic, um, for a, uh, industrial factory. Terrific. That's great news. And process wise, we're, uh, um, I think last, last month, I think you guys, if you, if I, I think we put it in there for the, we got $5,000 in nitrogen credit last month or for last year, um, that, that fee is slowly dwindling, dwindling away. Um, but we're still doing fine for that and phosphorus. Um, and we keep myself and Gary Russell, our, my process control operator, we keep messing with the process to do 
do more with less. Try to save it, save money with doing less in the process and still passing everything. <laughs> Perfect. That's great. <clears throat> Any questions on the facility plan? Excuse me, the facility report. Okay, we'll go to the next item, which is correspondence. Looks like we have one thing. I'm going to share my screen for a second here because this is, you know, this happens every year. It's a good um, piece of correspondence. But essentially, we, we received the annual, Tony just referenced this, the annual notice of nitrogen credit for the year. And the state sends this. So it comes, you know, technically from uh, the commissioner of the EP. Um, and so that's Katie Dykes. Um, it, how it works is they try to get, so nitrogen, nitrogen is an issue in Long Island Sound. They want people to remove nitrogen from the plants so that they don't bombard the sound because in the sound it's nitrifies, it's nitrification, it takes away oxygen for fish and lobsters and, you know, because Long Island Sound is a, is a dead point. So they take the people that are doing well on nitrogen and they give them money. And how they do that is they take from the people that are doing poorly on nitrogen and they take the money away. So you can see this column here. This is the good, the good list. They've upgraded their plants recently. They've addressed nitrogen control issues and they're getting credits. So Stanford is doing really well at $270,000 a year. Bridgeport on the other hand is doing pretty horribly. So they're paying $409,000 a year, essentially to the people on the left side. So Simsbury for the last, you know, long, as long as I've been on the commission, since we had a good upgrade and the plants being well-maintained and well-run, we get a credit. So <laughs> this year we're in the $5,000 range, which is great. If we wanted to go up this list, we would have to spend, I don't know, millions of dollars in capital improvements to get, oh, tens of thousands back. And as Tony referenced, as the balance is kind of coming to power, you know, and, and, and some of the naughties are moving over. So, you know, um, New Haven was recently naughty uh, and naughty's the wrong word, but they, were, they weren't they were ready for the nitrogen rule. If they had Waterbury, some others, as they move over from one list to the other, those numbers go up on the others, but they go down for us. So that, that you know, Rob, you know, it's the, the Robin Hood model, take from the the bees, which aren't necessarily rich, give to these, which are um, doing a good job mentioning. So that's that's that correspondence. It's the only thing I saw there. Does that all make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. And with that, the last item on the agenda for the day, it, oh, I'll stop sharing, is um, the minutes. So has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? <clears throat> and if anyone has any edits or comments on the minutes, this would be a great time. No comments. Allison does a fantastic job. That's a good comment. <clears throat> Great. Um, to say, well, I would entertain a motion if anyone has a motion for the minutes. So move. So Lucian has made a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Jacques is seconding. All those in favor say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. aye. Those opposed are nay. And Mr. Park is going to. I'll have to abstain. Abstain because he was not there. So the minutes are approved. And with that. Well, well before you before you go, yep. um, Allison, did they actually set a date for the public hearing? Or are we, did we, I don't think we did that in our motion. We just said we were gonna have a motion for a public hearing, but we didn't say a date. Um, let me just see who made that motion and then. I would assume it would be at our next monthly meeting, but I don't think anybody actually specifically said that. Can we amend the, would someone like to amend? So I, Lucian, I think it was your motion or yep. Michael, 
I motion. Yeah. So, so uh, move to have a public hearing at our next regular committee meeting. Second. And second, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Raise your hand, please. Aye. Aye. There's none, none opposed. So we're going to do it at the next meeting. Okay. Sorry about that. We got to get a new chair. So, you know, do it. You're, you're fired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Just, uh, just so you guys know that, that with that public hearing, again, I hate to keep jumping in. Um, we have to do the public hearings in person. We have to do them both in person and um, remotely. So mm. we have to provide it for both still, just so you guys know. Okay. So that means that you'll set up something in the at the plant for us to be there in person? Either or the plant or the library. Yep. Either the, the plant library. or the library. Yep. Do we have to be there in person or can we could dial in ourselves? You should be able to dial in yourselves. We just got to figure out where and how we're going to do it. Okay. So you guys will handle logistics and we can show up or not show up. Correct. Okay. All right. Very good. Thanks for the clarification. That's helpful. So now we know. Um, entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. <laughs> so move. All right. We are adjourned. Okay. Thank you all very much. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.